I'm here with Ruth Stackpole Moore with um, Harbor Litigation Funding. Great panel today. Thank you. Um, a couple questions, um, things that you guys discussed today. Um, what do you see in your experience at you know Harbor uh, Harbor Litigation? What, what's the typical profile of someone who utilizes third party funding? So I think the most important point to note is that there is no real typical profile. Um, some people still think of funding as something that is usually used by people who don't have funds to pursue their own claims. That's something that's very much changed over the last probably 10 to 15 years, depending on which jurisdiction you look at. Now we fund all types of claimants. Um, they might be companies, they might be individuals, they may have money, they may not, from you know very large blue chip organizations right down um, to you know anyone who's looking at bringing a, a commercial case. So you are seeing affluent corporations essentially uh, seeking out third party funding? We do, yes. We fund um, a lot of blue chip companies who, you know, they're very affluent, they have their own cash, um, they're choosing to use third party funding for various other reasons, risk mitigation factors. Um, we fund financial institutions, we fund sovereign wealth funds, um, we fund, you know, the whole range of, of, of companies, all sizes, all types of financial situations. And considering who you will who your company, for example, might fund, what are some of the typical factors that you look at in considering who would be a good candidate for funding? So we have four criteria that we apply to every case that we look at. Um, some relate to the claimant themselves and some relate to the case and some also relate to the respondent. Um, one of the most important things relates to the respondent and if you have a successful outcome, will you be able to recover against them? Um, because it's all very nice to have a piece of paper to say that you've won, but if there is no financial return at that point, then it's it's no good to us and our investors. So that's very important. We need to look at the reasonableness of the claimant. Um, why are they pursuing this case? Um, what are their settlement expectations? We ask all those those questions at the beginning. Um, we're also very much interested, obviously, in the merits of the case. Um, is the case going to be won on that basis? Uh, and then we also look at the legal representation that the claimants have chosen to instruct. Um, do they have the experience and the resources to be able to bring the case successfully? And if we have a good answer to all of those questions, then it's one that we might fund. That's great. I have one more question. And that has to do with confidentiality. I think it came up when I was talking to some other um, uh, people outside. What, what happens when, because you obviously just got this thing, one of the things you look at is the, the merits of the case, you know, how successful is it likely to be. That obviously requires some disclosure of the facts of the case. Mm -hmm. So does the client essentially have to waive confidentiality between them, themselves and the attorney in order to give that information? Uh, so actually the opposite. We So we enter into a funding agreement with the, the claimant themselves. Uh, we also enter into a non-disclosure and confidentiality agreement with them. So then they're able to provide those documents to us on a confidential basis. Um, in relation to Hong Kong, one of the amendments that's come in uh, in the new amendments to the ordinance specifically says that any documents that are provided to the funder remain within the ambit of commercial of confidentiality uh, and don't equal I think a waiver of privilege but that might go beyond but definitely it says that you know you are able to provide that documentation to a third-party funder thank you so much appreciate your time great thank you